Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the 3M Open this weekend. Um, and it's one of those tournaments immediately following a major where you have a lot of the you know, top players not playing. And what you have is the salary structure where, first of all, there are some guys over 10K, for example, that you're not used to seeing up here. And the other thing is that the average price per golfer is lower this week than it was at the majors. Uh, last week at the major, the uh, average price per player was 7,100. And this week it's 6,900. Actually, it's more like, as a matter of fact, let me just confirm that. The average salary for player this week is actually 60, yeah, 6,900. So, so 6,987. So it is naturally a little easier to get in everybody that you want. Um, uh, there's a couple of guys that dropped out, Hubbard and Howell. And what I've kind of found in these types of slates is that um, usually the guys that are rated, you know, that are priced above 9K or tend to be overpriced. And the guys that are in the 7Ks tend to be underpriced. Now, I don't mean underpriced. They're priced the way they are normally priced. But now they're not fighting against all these top guys. And they, for whatever reason, just did not get the, the price bump. All right. Um, so... I, I do believe that lineup constructions that leave money on the table are certainly in the, uh, certainly to be recommended. Um, I, I don't believe that guys like, even in a weaker field that guys like Tony Finau should be 10 five. Uh, it was the same situation a few weeks ago where Webb Simpson was priced at 10, six or something. And there was just literally not a shred of reason for me to play a share of him. I don't know if he made the cut or not, but you know, that's just results, whatever it is. But um, you know, I, I can't, play like 20 feet now at 10 five, you know, um, if there were one of these guys that I could attempt to justify, it would maybe be Hideki, but I just assume just get rid of all these guys. Uh, if you want to know the truth. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through kind of tier by tier. And there's one guy who is really just standing out who I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time on because it, he's a guy in the seven K range who just is rates so strongly but he's going to be so popular. Um, I'm probably going to end up having to fade him. Um, but in like kind of single entries and cash games, you're probably going to have to try to play him. But in, in, in general, you know, playing chalky, cheap guys in golf is not usually good policy. Okay. But let me go through kind of tier by tier and let's see, I'll, I'll go through the top guys I have and then let you know whether I'm going to play them. I actually lied. Uh, there, there is one guy in the 10K range that's that's okay. And for me, it's actually Sun Jm. Like the other guys, Fino and Hideki, I really doubt I'm going to end up playing any of them. But Sun Jm, for whatever reason, does rate to be a pretty good play here. Now, I'm a little early with respect to ownership. Um, my ownership projections right now are very, very thin. Um, I will tighten them up as we get closer to lock, which is, I guess, another day of, another day of looking. Um, but I, I imagine Sun Jane would be like 15% plus um, at least, but he is definitely my top guy over 10 K and I do have him rating as somebody worth playing. I guess the range where I'm very negative is on, is these nine K guys in the middle, like uh, Figala, Hadwin, McNeely, Riley. They just shouldn't be here. You know, there, there's no reason why these guys should be priced higher than these guys below them. Right? They're just all kind of middle of the road guys that are normally 7,600 in big fields. And this particular day, they had to make someone more expensive. So Tagala, Hadwin, McNeely, and Riley just, just go. Um, the, the only one of these guys that I have rated, you know, warranting a play is Riley, maybe. And even he is like, 20% owned. So I don't know. I, it's, uh, I guess you got to play somebody, <laughs> but um, to me, Davis Riley is really no better than some of these 8,500s, but any, in any case, um, uh, he is my favorite of, of this, uh, of this group. And then all the way down really to Maverick McNeely, he'd be my next guy. But I really don't have any big hurry to play any of these guys in the match. Okay, so 
the top two values I have on the board, actually one is in the 7K range, I'll get to him later, but the top two guys I have on the board are Brendan Steele and Cameron Tringali, okay? Um, now, here's the deal. Both these guys are going to be rating as kind of popular plays, right? Because they are just kind of mispriced. In other words, they are just as good as these guys above them, and yet they're being priced, you know, $1,000 lower. Um, but just because these, these two are chalky doesn't mean you can't play them, right? Because if you play guys that are chalky by themselves, uh, in and of themselves, but you put them together in a lineup that is going to be low owned, it's okay. And if you, for example, put Tringali and Steele in, in a lineup that's going to leave like 2000 on the table, then, then you can do it. You know, then, then you're in business here. And, and, um, uh, that actually might not be the worst idea in the world. So I do like Brendan Steele. I do like Cameron Tringali. I think those are my two strongest plays in the range. And then you go down to uh, Martin Laird, Nick Hardy, JT Poston, Adam Long. All those are, are going to be solid, good plays. This 8K range and the 7K range is really where I'm going to be living in this particular slate. But the top two I have are Tringali and Brendan Steele. So 7K range, we have to talk about um, the guy who at least it, it looks to be the most popular player on the slate. And that's going to be Ju Hyung Kim. So he's 7,300. And... First, let's look at this game log. I mean, 47th in the Open Championship, third in the Scottish Open, 23rd in the U.S. Open, missed the cut PGA, and then T17 in, in, in Byron Nelson, okay? And he's 7,300. I mean, this is kind of a ridiculous price when you think about it. And as a matter of fact, that's why the entire civilized world is jumping on this. I mean, I, I, I think that in big buy-ins, he might end up being 30% owned. Um it's just it's just way too big of a of, of a pricing discrepancy relative to his metrics and relative to how well he's been playing. And he's also got a you know young player upside, you know what I mean? Like he could who's to say he shouldn't be 9K? You know what I mean? So he's definitely the best play on the slate. But the question is, is what are you gonna do if he really does come in 30% owned? I mean, that's rough, man. It's 7,300, you know, chalk plays that are 7300 usually that's usually not good policy in in golf um in most any sport really um with the exception of like an nfl if you have an nfl like you know min price 3k running back who's kind of a lock i mean you should you play him um because you just know that it's all about volume there but you have a sport as high variance as golf which is and then you're going to get a guy who is kind of a 70 you know who's 7300 and 30 percent owned it's probably a good idea to fade him. Um, at the very least, I would make sure that if you did play him in, in the lottery tournaments, that you really you really only played him with, with low-owned other stuff, okay? Um, or really commit to leaving a, a just truckload of money on the table, which you can do, you know? Um, but he just rates through the roof as the best play on the board, um, that, at least the way I have it. Uh, next four i have four or five i have so many other guys but let's 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 go through them the next guy i have rated below kim is going to be um matthew neesmith uh let's take a look and just see what he's been doing recently um oh well, missed uh, missed one cut but he's been uh, he's been he's been plowing away in tough tournaments so and see why he probably rates to be a good play. And for me, he rates as number two. And he might not be that high owned. So, so, so Neesmith might be a very strong play here. Might be a pretty good fade. I mean, a good pivot off of Kim. If you wanted to get something low owned, that'd be actually be a pretty strong play actually to do that. And then another one that you could use is, is Adam Svensson. Um, but he is going to be probably pretty popular, at least on first, on first look. Let's pull him up. Let's all take a look at his game log. Or his, what is it, tournament log? See what that looks like. Yeah, he's coming off a sixth, then a 24th, 25th, 25th. So he's probably going to get ownership. But if you didn't want to do that, 
There's another guy you could pivot to who rates to have much lower ownership than either of those guys, and that would be CT Pan. Um, let's see what he's been doing recently. Hopefully a bunch of cuts. He's, yeah, yeah, he's been okay. Um, so I think CT Pan is, at least on early ownership, looks like pretty, uh, pretty strong. And then um, another guy who, yeah, boy, it's tough to play this dude, but uh, Jason Day at 7,800, he looks to be really strong. Now, again, like you look at a, look at a lineup like this, okay? I'm not telling, telling you to play this, but here you have like six totally reasonable plays that, that leave, and you could play all these guys, leave 3,000 on the table. And yes, your, your median projection is going to be kind of much, a little bit below if you use these 10 Ks, but it won't be that much lower. And you certainly make up for it in uniqueness. And it'll be one of those things where you can play six guys and let's say you play six guys and they're all 15, 20% owned and you'll, you'll, and you might end up being the only one with a lineup of all six of them, you know, because you'll leave money on the table. Um, two other guys in the seven K range, Brendan Todd, Troy Merritt. Those are guys that look good. And one of the guys that I'll, I'll always throw in is, is a man, Emiliano Grillo. Uh, he's going to be less than 10% owned as well. Um, let me see if there is anybody below the seven K range that is, I'm looking at it all. And the answer is no. I mean, like uh, Bryce Garnett is the closest thing, but even, but he's rated from like 58, you know? So I'm real, I'm really not going to get there. Um, there's just too many good plays in the 70 K range that I don't, I'm not going to need to go down there. Um, so th for those of you that have been following along, it's, it's the same approach as two weeks ago, that tournament where or was it three weeks ago or Webb Simpson. Yeah. Three weeks ago, where Webb Simpson was 10, six or whatever. And we just basically left money on the table and played these 7,500, 7,800 guys. I think it's the same idea. Um, I think that, in hand builds, you're supposed to just fade these 10Ks, maybe even fade the 9Ks and just uh, LFG. You know, that's where he took, that's where he went for Cam Davis, right? Was that, was that the tournament? Where he ended up? Oh, the John Deere, right? He ended up T8. Um, I don't think the course is quite as favorable for him uh, this time. So he's not as strong of a play, although he's still pretty decent. But that's kind of what I would do. What I would do is I would, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a hard cap on my um, on my salary. Hard cap. Hard cap? Is that yeah, hard cap of some amount where I, I'm going to be guaranteeing to leave money on the table. How much? I don't know. What I think I might do I might do 1100 because I think some people might say, okay, to leave a thousand, but maybe the 1100 might spook people and you might get some good unique lineups with 48.9 through 48.99 or whatever. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, 48, uh, like 48.9 or in the 48 or something like that. I don't know. So yeah, I, I, I would leave probably yeah 48 nine. i would meet, leave a minimum of 1100 i think on the table i think that's what i'm gonna do and what you i guarantee you'll get some good plays okay and i also guarantee you this that if you that if you uh what you call is if you compare the average projection it's going to be lower than if you just didn't put salary on the table but i think you're going to be happy with it as a matter of fact you want to have some fun yeah let's do that Let's put in, let's run a couple of builds just for fun. And I want to see like the difference in average projection between if you left money on the table and you didn't. Like what, what, like what are you, what are you, um, what are you giving up by doing this? So let's, uh, let's actually just use theirs. Let's not use, you know, let's not, let's not give everything away. Let's just, let's just use their projections, Saber Sims. Let's build a lineups with just this normal 20 lineups. Uh, nothing, we're not forced to leave anything on the table. We'll do 20 max settings, nothing else. And we'll just go like this. Okay, we'll build 20. And what I'm looking for are what the, I don't want to say the average, but like the general, you know, um, the general projections. 
of the lineups that we're going to build when we are not putting any hard cap. All right. So let's see what we got. So we're going to rank. Okay. So projections, uh, 412, 430. What we're going to do, let's rank them by projection. Actually. Okay. So 454, 450, 450. Mostly 450s, kind of around there, all the way down to 446. Okay, fair enough. And obviously, Kim is in every lineup. Well, 80%. So now what I want to do is let's now put a hard cap of 48.9. Well, just to give you an example. Let's put in 49,000. And we'll put no minimum salary. We'll put under here. So 49,000. So now we're going to build with a 49,000 cap. And let's see how much we're costing ourselves in, 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 in projected projections, in projected results, let's see. Okay. So again, we're not gonna rank them by Sabre score, we're gonna rank them by projection score. And here, so you have, look at this. So 455, 451, 450. So you're not even costing yourself anything. You know, by leaving money on the table. And when you get down to these, you are, you know, when you get down to the 445s, but now you're, you're getting so much back in terms of ownership, you know, uh, like no one's going to have these lineups. So that's a, I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty sharp way to play. Um, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. All right. If I come back with another uh, uh, update with, with Bobby in next day or so, great. If not, this will be my, my preview. And that is definitely going to be my approach. Uh, good luck, everybody.